All right, welcome back to the championship celebration. Before we get to the parade, we, <laughs> we have, have a guest. Get in here, Hank. Let's get go, here, Hank. Come on in come here, Hank. Hank. That's fine. You walk uh, in front of us. That's fine. Oh, do I get him? Yes! We have dogs. <laughs> Hank is here to celebrate the dogs winning another national hey, championship. Boy. Oh, hello, Hank. You're What's such up, a good dog? boy. Come now, where is Hank from? Columbus, Georgia, all right. Columbus, Georgia, what a beautiful doggy. Hank is ready, we're ready. This is an awesome day, you know, isn't it, guys? You know, Ugga X did not get to go to Los Angeles Hank's for the championship. Scared. It's okay, Hank. But I'm sure, I'm oh, hoping Ugga's Hank's gonna ready be to go. here today. Hank's ready to go. Ready. Here you go, Dad. <laughs> Bye, Hank. It was great seeing Bye, you. Oh. See you later. Thanks for coming on. Yes, you're <laughs> right. You. Ugga X did not make the trip to Los Angeles. That's a long way for a it bulldog is. to go, but hopefully he'll be here today. Yeah, I would think he would. So that's going to be what we're going to be watching for when the parade starts, really, in just a few minutes at any I, time. I mean, we are just inching closer and closer. And you can see, you can already feel the buzz growing around Sanford Stadium, mm -hmm. but the parade is going to start in just a couple yes. of minutes. And right there at the beginning of the parade is where we find Faith and J-Bell. You ladies have been there rocking it. The parade's about to start. I know, and I, I'll say one thing that we've noticed a little bit lately is folks kind of jockeying for positions oh, yeah. because they know that the anticipation is about to come to an end, that the players, the coaches, the entire team, the support staff, everyone's going to be making their way right through this corner to kick off this victory parade. And let me tell you, when they come to the corner right here, they are going to be met with so much energy. Let me get some. Yes. People are so excited. And like you said, it is packed up here at the it start really of the It really is. And so many people have traveled from across the state of Georgia to be here today. I said earlier that I think this crowd is larger than what we saw for the original uh, national championship parade that we saw last year and so the crowds are bigger and um, for fans that traveled out to LA this is a, a big change because we were out there I was out there in LA myself with mm -hmm. my sister for the game it was a soggy mess today we've got some sunshine sun thank goodness the weather is cooperating the little bit of cold that we're dealing with is okay because yes. people are sporting brand new back-to-back -back national championship gear out here today as they get ready to greet the dogs and many of you all already know that J Bell here is probably probably the biggest fan here at the parade. So, J-Bell, how does it feel for you to be here witnessing this for a second year in a row? It's incredible, and I think a lot of Georgia fans will say that they have waited for so long for this moment, for this program. We've watched us kind of knock on the door of greatness, and we have finally reached that mountain peak there yeah. where the team is getting what they deserve because they have seen so much work that they've put into this. Yeah. We see what the mantras have been from Coach Kirby Smart, and we've seen the work that these players have put in and the crowds are out here just waiting because this uh, exactly they're really excited because they know that in just a few minutes the back-to-back -back national championship Georgia Bulldogs will be coming around this corner dogs on top back-to-back -back, three back -to -back. that's a lot of what we're hearing out yes, here today everybody is saying three Pete I love how we have people all up on the wall people all around here I love seeing all the bulldogs that are out like you said the four leg friends and people out here are just number one there's just so much camaraderie just so mm -hmm. much excitement people are faithful for the second season even though you all will be losing sets and bennett they say you know what kirby smart he has really taken this team he's really taken this program and really transformed it and people are really confident they are it's going to be a really good season next exactly. year exactly and that's what we saw last year and i think kirby proved to everyone that it can be done and it can be done here yeah. in athens we can reload we can keep recruiting we can continue Continue to bring in that top caliber of players here to the Classic City to fight on for the Georgia Bulldogs. The chants are getting started out here. We've been filled, uh, have been asking who's that coming down the track, and now we've got the Georgia and the Bulldogs chant. So a lot of folks really, really getting ready because the minutes are counting we down are quickly. So close, and I keep seeing people like look around the corner to see if anything is coming down as soon as we see something but the streets are closed off the police are out here blocking the way so nobody gets hit and i do hear some motors starting to come down this it way it does sound like there's some so motors in the distance and i think that's a lot now. a big clue that folks are waiting on yes we yes. have got crowds crowds um, look at that even if you can see over there Last year, it didn't seem like there were this many people that deep. A lot of folks trying to find the high ground so they can get that view of the team as they start to begin to come by. Uh, Steven, I'm not sure if we can kind of show, like, there's a lot of interesting things. There's even a Georgia bear with a 
with a jersey over there. <laughs> and I think some of the first cars are getting ready to come around the corner oh, yes. and down the street. We are Again, at we're at the corner seconds. of Lumpkin and Pinecrest, and we're seeing a lot of the photographers that are officially on the job here starting to move around. Mm -hmm. And that just is another signal that we're just getting closer yes. and closer to the start. We are very, very close. I actually see some kids climbing some trees to try to get a better <laughs> view up there. <laughs> As long as they're careful. Anything to see the dogs. <laughs> Anything. To, and uh, there's a helicopter. Everybody. And I mean, just looking at the sea of red and black, people are just so excited to be out here. It's a beautiful day. You know, we had some rain and some storms. And Mother Nature said, it's going to be okay today. Yeah, they certainly have. And a lot of the vans, it didn't matter what Mother Nature was going to give us today. They were going to be out here regardless to cheer on the dogs Hi. and to say hello, thank you for this season, this back-to-back -back season that we have seen. A lot of folks really grateful to see this time in Georgia's program. We've been waiting on it for so, so long. And now that it's finally here, folks would not miss an opportunity to come out and say, thank you, Coach Kirby Smart. Thank you to these players, to this staff who have helped create this legacy that we're building here in the University of Georgia. People driving from all over in our last uh live shot we actually heard from Tamika who drove two hours from Noonan or she said she rode in the back seat chilling for two hours from Noonan. That's the to way to come here. to Athens a ride. <laughs> and she was so excited she said she is Georgia's number one fan and look we have some there and we the go. cheers are going we, we have the start of the parade coming down we see the red They're white and blue the, the police, police escorting the start of the parade. For the official start of the parade the traffic motorcycles from Athens Clark County have now begun. The parade is now officially underway and you see them coming down the street. Folks are running around trying to get those top prime positions right now. We see Kirby Smart right here on your screen right now getting ready to come by the leader of this championship team. Head coach Kirby Smart. We're seeing this Georgia State Patrol who are leading the way as the Bulldogs begin this parade. And Coach Smart has built such a legacy here at the University of Georgia. I think the crowds really are just grateful to have him, a Georgia grad, here building it. And I'm sure it really means a lot for him to be able to do this at his alma mater. He truly is beloved here. And you can see the, the, the mark he's really made on this school and this program. And as a non-UGA fan, or excuse me, a non-UGA alum, I am a UGA fan now. Let's get That's that straight. Right. She's on board. <laughs> Faith is on board with us. I can see the love and the impact that Kirby Smart has had, not just for this community, but for football fans all over. I mean, looking at these last two seasons is really a fairy tale. And there he is with his wife right there. And Coach Sir, we know y'all have been seeing Coach Smart, but he is just now getting to the corner where Faith and I are. He's along there with his wife, Mary Beth, and we see Coach Smart rubbing up the crowd there. He's got the cell phone out, taking this, just taking this moment in. Coach Smart telling everybody, he's standing up in this convertible, telling everybody, cheer us on, cheer us on. We see the president of the University of Georgia along with Harry Dog. Another Corvette. This is the way to arrive to a parade this in is style. Way to arrive in style. We're also seeing athletic director Josh Brooks coming behind the president. A lot of them really excited to see the crowds that are out here to support this team. We've got some horns hawking, some mean machine vehicles dressed mean out machine. in red and black. And a lot of folks who are participating in this parade can't help but try to document this moment themselves. Yes. They've got their own phones out here, just like the crowd does, because they want to document everything that they're seeing. And it's so exciting. So it's exciting. deafening crowds out here. It certainly feels like we're inside Sanford Stadium as these cars are starting to come by. All right, we got and a hay ride coming on. More. Yeah, we've got a flatbed up here right now. The national and champion. And let's see who we got on this flatbed. It looks like this is might be maybe some family and friends. Right, family I and friends. I see Coach Brian McClendon, who is a Georgia alum himself, out here on this flatbed. So this looks like we've got some coaches. I believe I see Coach Todd Munkin out here as well. And so this is likely some of the coaches and their families also getting some of this credit and well-deserved credit for how Hoping to lead this team on the way. So they're going to be just like with some of the players with these hay bales as they ride down the street. I see the jerseys and the families waving, all excited to see the crowds that have come out here on this blustery Saturday to cheer on the dogs. I love when you're looking at the doors, that really stands out to me. You see that back to back. 
Exactly. Go back. And National they've got that new logo proudly displayed on the side of all of these trucks. And these are massive trucks. These streets in Athens are known for being small. So yes. they are certainly doing a great job of I'm avoiding the impressed. crowds out here. It is very impressive to see the <laughs> maneuver. We've got folks inside the truck as well as the folks that are following yes. behind. This looks like more coaches coming along with their families and probably some support staff that are actually out here on some of these beds as well and I love making their way through the crowds. The baby bulldogs on the, the hay rides, they are so cute in their red and black jumpers and And they're just taking it all in. Taking it's, it all it's in. It's really an incredible and it's really a family moment. And you see, I can tell, we can tell Stetson Bennett is here because the crowd is so excited. Stetson Bennett in his own convertible there. A lot of crowds really getting amped up to see the quarterback of this championship team out here greeting the crowd. It looks like he's got some other players uh, with him riding along. They're really excited to so see excited. the first players coming along. And it's really an exciting moment here. We've got some trucks now, some more players on the way. And again, the players are now starting to make their way, so you can really feel even more excitement coming now from the crowds as they're starting to see some of their favorite players make their way around. We're trying to get some glimpses of who we're seeing on these flatbeds, but you can certainly tell these are team members and they've got their phones out as well. They are out here taking this all in, documenting it all. They're so excited. And we saw Christopher Smith in the front seat with Stetson Bennett. Now you can see more of the team on these Ford F-150s, BMWs. They are riding in style today, Miss Bellamy. They certainly are, and they deserve it. A lot of folks, they've all got their cell phones out as well. Taking in this moment from the fans that are celebrating this historic victory for our university. So many people out here really, really excited to see some of their favorite players. And I think one of the main attractions was Stetson Bennett, who we just saw a short time ago. We're starting to see more. We're hearing the Hans Horn, the Hordes honk, rather, as the team members are starting to come. They're riding in style, but, you know, we're also hoping that they're staying safe. We're seeing some of them hanging out some of these vehicles here. They're and, having a lot of fun. And look, yeah. I, I got to say, I mean, this is a clean ride that they're riding in. They're going about two miles per hour, so they're all right. Yeah, and there's a little bit of a hang up here on this crowd, but this is certainly giving everyone here at the start of the parade yes. even more time to soak up with these players, yes. to see them and cheer them on, say thank you. They're having such a great time. The energy right here at the start is wild. We can barely hear each other kind of talking over because there's just so many screams, so many cheers. You can just feel the love coming here in Athens today. We are number one. Look, you heard that. And it's so it's such an incredible moment for these players. You know, they work so hard throughout their careers, playing football, getting better, working to get to a moment like this. And so they're all really just able to take in this moment yeah. right now. The crowds yeah. are kind of a little subdued right now for a, a temporary moment as we're waiting to see more and more of these players come around. There's a bit of a bottleneck, but you know, we'd want them to drive through slowly so all the fans along the route can get a chance to say hi, wave at the players, get some pictures, get some videos. And that's certainly something that we're excited to see because these players certainly deserve it. A lot of work going into a season like this, let alone two. Two, and I was gonna say, you think about, you have to put yourself in the mindset of these boys how much work they were out there on practice every single practice out there on the field anytime things got hard they had to uh, push through and make it happen and you guys are looking at an undefeated team undefeated a national perfect championship season, a perfect 15 and 0 season historic for our university and the players are starting to get the crowd amped up. I told you that oh, pause yeah. was only temporary because the players are now doing everything they can to keep this crowd as hype as this season has been. We're seeing more and more folks come by. 
they're in the trucks, they're in the convertibles, bundled up a little bit in some national championship gear. I'm hoping that they're in their layers as well because they're going to be outside for quite some time. Once this parade wraps up, we know they're going to be heading to the dog walk, the traditional dog walk, where Georgia fans, if you're not familiar, are usually able to get that high five in pre-game to see those fans along with the band and the cheerleaders and everybody else to hype them up before the game. And we're hearing that crowd again. Let's check out who's on this truck. More and more fans reacting to seeing some of these Georgia players really excited, really just happy to be there. The players really enjoying this moment. We're hoping they're safe. We see him on the, on the side of the truck now. To make sure they make it to the end of the parade. Absolutely. And I was going to say, if you guys have not gotten your uh, national championship gear yet, I see a couple of tables out here selling it. So they make have. Sure there have been a lot of folks selling uh, new gear out here on the <laughs> campus of, it, of uh, Athens and UGA. Emphasis on That's right. And right here at this truck right now, we're seeing Keely Ringo, number five Keely Ringo, who was responsible for so many dynamic plays this season and last. We do think that we will be seeing him head to the NFL very soon. But Keely Ringo right here looking, smiling, and engaging with the fans. We've got fans near us that are actually talking, trying to have full conversations oh, with yeah. Keely Ringo oh, right yeah. there. Okay. She wants a picture. She Get wants a picture. picture She's ahead. getting a picture with yes. Keely. He's got that <laughs> smile up there for her. Not sure how loud that is, but she uh, she said, I'm going to get my picture, and she is excited about it. I She's love that. very energy. happy. And, you know, that's what these players get to see all the time, every day, every Saturday in Athens, rather, when these fans come out here to cheer on the dogs. This is the type of electric atmosphere that they see and that they're used to. And so this is, yeah. for some of them, one last opportunity yeah. to see that great atmosphere, that great reaction, that camaraderie with the entire Bulldog Nation yeah. uh, as a player. And you talk about four oh decades God. between these national championships and you'd speak to you know people who were at school for that championship in the 80s and then being able to witness uh the championship these two championships back to back now i mean it's just so much energy so much excitement and jay bell being a I want to tell you right. Well, give me just a second because we're seeing fans oh, we're seeing. because of the bottleneck, because of the yeah, they are coming fans to get an autograph. Coming to get autographs. A lot of you, if you see one person do it, you see others. So folks are going over there trying to find anything they can to get shirts, signs, autograph. Yeah. People coming up to the trucks now to get pictures with the players. Looks like some law enforcement <laughs> is coming in now to kind well, of put that quick. to an end and try quick. to get some of these folks back out of the road so that the parade can continue safely. A lot of folks really running out to the cars. Again, we saw one person do it and everybody else wanted to make sure that they could get their opportunities oh, <laughs> with these championship dogs as well. Uh, another car coming here. The, the route's starting to get going a little bit more after some somewhat of a pause out there. And again, we do want everybody to have that moment all along the route to see some of their favorite players as they continue to roll by here in Athens. And I love how all of the players on the trucks, I mean, they're just so humble. They're just so grateful to be here. Yeah. Um, these young men, you know, they work very hard for these last two seasons. And I know some of them, you know, won't be with the team next year, but the others that will be, they're going to be looking to work hard to bring another championship home to Athens. So maybe we'll be at this parade again this time next year. Look! <laughs> say hi to 11 Look, Come over here, come say hi. I don't think you can get off the, the, the they car. They are certainly having fun That's with Kenny that. Kenny McIntosh. McIntosh. <laughs> Thanks, Kenny. A lot of fun being had because the players know that this is just a moment that not everybody gets to experience in their lifetime, in their collegiate careers playing football, if they make it to that level. And so they are certainly soaking it in. <laughs> they are so much fun. It in. You can just imagine being, you know, being able to come in and the whole town coming. The people who have been watching on TV, who have been in the stadiums yeah. all season We're long. We're seeing some high fives going on now, oh, some yeah. fist bumps and more folks coming from the other side. We see the, again, law enforcement trying, trying to, to, keep, people to keep people safe yeah. out here. A lot of kids running out and, and running out to the students. I'm trying to get a look at who this is. I think this might be Lad McConkey. I'm not sure. He's sitting there in the middle. Uh, I think that might be 
Lad McConkie. Police really trying to control the crowd here. Folks are running out with stuffed animals and everything. A lot of excitement <laughs> from the crowds. Really excited to see some of their favorite Georgia players. I'll tell you what, this energy today, boy, I haven't seen energy like this in a long time. These fans are on a whole nother level today, and it's a really good one. Yeah, very, very excited. Going. And, and again, they are working to keep everybody safe because this, this is a lot of children. Yes. Ducking, folks ducking from behind the, the partitions to get to the players because for some, this is as close as they get to some of the team and members. You know, you actually just made a good point because, you know, some to some uh, young people, to some fans, and who is this coming up here? Okay, some more players on the track here. People, you see, you watch these guys play all season long. You have them on your um, video games. You have posters. And yep. now you're actually seeing them in person. Like you said, being able to walk up, shake a hand, give a hug, get an autograph. That's actually, just a dream I said earlier, I thought that was Lad McConkey. I couldn't tell. This is Lad McConkey here. Okay. You see him there with the curls on top. A big fan favorite this year. Putting in a lot of work. And uh, thanks to Maria Martin and some of her coverage on this national championship run, we now know, along with some of the fellow Bulldogs who didn't know, that Lad is his middle name. His first name is All right. Andrew. All right. Kind of like Andrew Smart, Kirch, uh, Coach Kirby Smart's youngest son. Uh, this is a, a different well, we got bit a of vibe DJ. from this truck. Okay. This truck's got their own soundtrack going. We got a whole and little the players dance party are going it. On. They're vibing on the back of this <laughs> truck for sure. I love it. I love it. The energy, the celebration. Yeah, that's the first truck that we've seen, the first vehicle that we've With seen the music. bumping their yeah, own music. Here. Yeah, look, we're not mad at it. Not mad at it at all. The players working to get the crowd hype and active, clapping along, cheering everybody. So excited to be a part of a day like this. It's something, again, that not everybody gets to experience. Not everybody at all. I mean, you look at just the stats of how now many we've, we've, we've it this far. We've got another car playing music. We're hearing the devil went down to Georgia. The devil went down kind to Georgia. Kind of appropriate here. <laughs> and we've got some horns blaring, so we're going to continue to check and see who's coming around the corner. We're getting a, a little bit of a pause again here in the parade as more and more folks are continuing to come around. Come around. Jay, but we have the pause. As a, as a bulldog yourself, how, how does this feel being out here, being able to see all this today? It's great. And, you know, I think I'm really envious of people who are currently <laughs> students to actually have this opportunity as a student. Yeah. To yeah. be able to have that, that access on campus to come and, and enjoy the games as a student. I think it is a little bit different of an experience. And so they're probably really excited. We've got some pom-poms and stuff going now. truck look they said sirens is going they are up high there and i think they're up high on the truck but up high today yes. in general and the linemen to be in I'm this moment you, you got to be tough to be in one of those positions you certainly do and here comes some more familiar faces and again really everybody is just so excited to be a part of this they are documenting this day for themselves as well we think all the cameras out here sunglasses a lot of excitement because this really is their day Absolutely. they're talking to each other from one fire truck to another because they're just so hyped they're so excited to be here and you know you gotta have that bulldog red on the fire truck and it looks like we have another 18 wheeler coming up here holding some more of the team another hay ride yeah <laughs> everybody and these sirens i tell you what they are getting really really pumped today all right, we're seeing Tate Rutledge and Millet that have just come by not too long ago. Some big playmakers for the team. And now we're seeing even more team members on this big, humongous flatbed. National championship. National champion. Dogs. Really excited here. And this one's cutting the corner kind of close. We're having to shift a little bit because they are just that close to all of the fans here. Yeah, We've we got even more coming. Bit. We've got even more fans coming on some of the uh, golf carts that are up next here. 
and then some more officers that are more officers rounding out this, this, this uh, parade coverage. Okay, so and I believe we're seeing some is, injured dogs here on this on this car. I believe this is the one of the buses that they came back in from the airport. Yeah, and we're seeing it decked out with that back to back with the palm trees, the four stars, and all of the the things that are so symbolic of this run that the team has made. So these are the team buses that we saw when after uh, when the players when the were team landing. returned back. Yes, when they from returned LA. back. We saw them come from Hartsfield all the way back to Athens in these buses, and here they are now in the yeah. parade. And it looks like the parade is rounding out with a series of these buses. Signaling that we're, we're ending is uh, what we're seeing here at the beginning is probably coming to an end as the team, though, continues to make its way because we do know that there are so many crowds, uh, so many people in the crowds, rather, that have lined up all the way up and down Lumpkin, all the way to the dog walk, all which is what will be the next portion of this day, the dog walk, with more people lined up there to greet the team and the coaches as they make their way, their way inside Sanford Stadium for that ceremony. And I got to just say, this has got to be the most perfect day for this. The sun is out, the uh, clouds are clear, blue skies, lots of smiles on faces, a lot of energy. We got pom-poms in the crowd. We got bulldogs in the crowd. And the fans really excited for what they just witnessed. Still cheering on the dogs. Even though most of the players and coaches have already passed by the starting point, folks still excited. Very excited. And some of them will now be making their way inside for that ceremony. And we will, of course, be bringing you that on 11 Alive Plus later on today for anyone who is sitting at home warm instead of out here on this cold, <laughs> cool, blustery day. We'll have live coverage of this parade. Well, not live, but we'll have a, a re-air re of everything that we just saw yes. on this parade. So yes. if you know anybody at home who wasn't able to make it out here to Athens, wasn't able to watch this live coverage, we will be wrapping it all up with a bow and putting it on our 11 Alive Plus app available on Roku and Fire, Amazon Fire TV. And if you are watching right now, yeah. you'll have a chance to relive all of the moments because it really is just a special time to be a Georgia Bulldog fan. It's great to be a Georgia Bulldog fan, but this really is a special time. We're seeing the barricades have gone up. Crowds are starting, starting to, to move. Through. And again, many of these people will be making their way to where Maria Martin and Chris Holcomb are right now because that's where the ceremony is going to be taking place. So we'll send it back to you guys. Yeah, we are at the end of where everything is gonna gonna move to, into our direction in just a little while. It's on the way here now. It's really interesting to see how the fans, this crowd, really growing. Where we are right now, we are of course you see the stadium behind us here, but the dog walk is right over there, and that's where the parade is going to now. The players are gonna get out of their vehicles and get off of the backs of the trucks, yeah. and they will walk through the dog walk there between the bookstore and the Tate Center. They'll go down the stairs, then under. The the bridge and into the stadium so we're at the part now that they're coming to and we can't wait to see these players come by and i know these fans are waiting too oh my gosh the, i saw all of the people in the shot just going crazy and you could hear them around here just getting more and more excited i, I have my notepad out because i'm quickly trying to <laughs> scribble who we're seeing on the back of trucks and, and who all we're seeing and russ uh it's awesome to see these guys celebrate we're getting ready to see kirby smart come through really soon you saw his assistant yep. miss ann Miss Ann. she was in there uh we saw so many guys that's in penny I hey, mean. Stetson is riding with his center, <laughs> Cedric Van Pran Granger. The dudes on that team love Stetson Bennett, but yeah. that's why. Yeah. He's riding with yes. his thinking center, most <laughs> yeah. important guy on the field. You love the dude. I, I love, and I love that. A former center, of course, you got to shout out Cedric Van Pran. Uh, this is going to be such a cool moment, especially for some of those super seniors. Yep. Stetson is one of them. Obviously, we saw Christopher Smith, another yep. super senior. Keely Ringo, who is not a super senior, but he did declare for the NFL draft. So for some of these guys that are leaving and going to the NFL, this is the moment to take it all in. Or not just going to the NFL, maybe going on to do whatever. You, yep. You're doing other things. Uh, lots of these guys go on to do really incredible things. But this parade is so exciting i love this day yeah and the best part is as you said you can like look at how many more people there oh, yeah. are here now than when we first got here this morning right you know so you were at the, the beginning really coach rick's first recruiting class yes. right and that's when the dog walk started it is. right so you were part of the beginning of this tradition of the dog walk happening here on uh, on campus 
Uh, 100%. And I think, Kirby, is Kirby on there yep, now? Yeah, there's Kirby. <laughs> Here he comes. Oh, he's, he's waving up the crowd. You guys are looking at him exactly as we are. Kirby better be ready, man. Here's the, you want me to tell you the biggest issue with the dog walk, especially today? Yeah. Tell us. These guys listen to Kirby's pregame speech, and when you walk through that, those fans are way more fired up than you are. You would better put your chest protectors on because they will bruise you wow. with all the slaps and the, the fired upness. And <laughs> yeah. Kirby is nothing. I mean, he's just putting it straight in their veins. I mean, it's just red meat to the to the wolves out there. So, as a uh, player, this, this as a player though, when you were coming into the stadium and walking through the dog yeah. walk, that fires you up even more, doesn't it? I mean, it's a good thing. So the dog walk is what two hours before the game. Yeah. So you're trying to you're trying to peak. At game time, yeah. but all the fans, they've been getting after it for several hours. Be like, hey, man, chill out just a minute, but not today, baby. That's not right. Like, fire it up as loud as you want to be. Like, we're here for all of the excitement today. Not today. One of the coolest things that we're seeing right now is Kirby Smart, along with his family, his wife, Mary Beth, who was a collegiate athlete here at the University of Georgia. They also had their son, Andrew, who I was talking to Mary Beth when she was coming off the field in Los Angeles, guys, and I said, look, one of the coolest things to me is that Andrew is so involved he with is. this program. And she said, you know what? Honestly, Maria, I I don't think we could get him away from this place if we tried. And they have tried a couple of different times, but he has pregame responsibilities. He's out there with the players and any of the players that I talked to in Los Angeles this week. They said one of the coolest things is their interactions with Andrew Smart and how rare it is to have a head coach bring his son around and be as infiltrated with the program as he is. This is such a cool moment for that my, family. My man's nickname is Boogie. All right. <laughs> it, he did not get that name just by half a chance. So he is a wide open kid. He is Kirby Jr. The oh, camera wow. loves him. And, uh, I mean, I would subscribe to a channel of just watching Boogie on game day. That'd be and great. it would be amazing. Can we strap a GoPro to him or something? Because he's got these pregame warm-up drills. Just go. you got people on roofs trying to get spots of Kirby. You can hear everybody calling the dogs. I mean, Mary Beth just looking fantastic out there today. The Smart family taking in every single moment. This is incredible. This is a man who has had three national championship appearances. He's won two of them. You throw out the words legacy and what Kirby Smart is building here in Athens. It's probably possible that we're starting to talk about a dynasty being built. Russ, what do you think? Uh, if you're saying a dynasty being built, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. You don't win back-to-back -back national championships, which has happened what, five times in history? Yes. I, I think. Yeah. Um, you know, Bama, Bama claims a lot, but I don't know if they all count. So <laughs> I think as far three as, in like, the modern era, as, but far it's as yeah, modern era stuff, it just doesn't happen very often. Sure, it is incredibly hard to win football games, especially at big time SEC just power. SEC five stuff. in general. I mean, yeah, yeah. So with where we're at right now, they're already scheduled, <laughs> not scheduled, um, projected again by Vegas to be favorites in every game next year. Yeah, they're at the top of the mountain, and nobody else is even close right now. So uh, <laughs> it is an amazing time to be a Georgia Bulldog. You know, one of the most amazing things to me, Chris, is that this is a team that lost so many guys the NFL last year, yeah. especially even to the first round. And the whole conversation around specifically this Georgia defense was, ah, oh, they're going to drop off. They're not going to be as good as they were last year. And look at what they did. I mean, the defense, really, it wasn't even close in a lot of these games. They were able to hold teams to very minimal points. I mean, the defense did an incredible job. So that is what Kirby is building, teams that can sustain success, and he just reloads. It's the narrative that we've been talking about with Nick Saban for yeah. so long, oh. his former boss. And now we're talking about Kirby Smart being the guy and you're a coach's wife you yeah. know how these coaches what's in their mind unfortunately always, yes i do <laughs> they are always looking for that motivation for and sure. just that motivation of hearing you lost 15 guys y'all aren't going to be as good next year that got him going, I think. It's actually really funny because the video that went viral on my Twitter was literally with Nolan Smith saying, they said we were going to go 7-5. and five. Sir, nobody thought you were going to go 7-5, no, and five, but that. people are believing yeah. on this program that they are the underdogs, and they should by no means ever think that. Stets has been an underdog his whole life. Sure. This year, you're talking about the defense. There were no superstars on the defense this year. It's like when Eric Russell used to coach the no-name dogs. It was just a bunch of pit bulls that got after it <laughs> yeah. every single week and wouldn't let go when it was time time to go. Some so, of the uh, stuff that we're looking at right now, yeah. sorry to interrupt yeah, you, you're, you're going to see Stetson Bennett coming up on this car. You were just talking about him. He is sitting with, of course, his center, which is what yes. Russ was alluding Love to it. earlier. Cedric Van Pran, what an awesome dude. Such a great uh, guy to talk to. Had an incredible season as usual. In that passenger seat, in the front right passenger seat, 
We've been talking about him. He's a super senior, Christopher Smith. So excited to go out strong here in Athens. Continue your thought. I'm sorry about that. I don't even know what I was saying. I don't know. Distracted by centers and Stetson Bennett now. So. I mean, to be distracted by a center, I think, is great for you. You're like, yes, go center. Who else are we looking at? About it, but somebody's about to sell a lot of sweatshirts with what Stetson has on today. That, so, uh, that is true. Get a lot of press time he, he's the guy that puts Georgia on the map. He's been doing a great job of doing that for yep. sure. You've got a bunch of different guys. To be totally honest with you guys, it's it's a little hard to see who these guys are. We got Christian Miller on one of these cars. We're trying to make them out as you're seeing them as well. Uh, seeing these individual cars drive by, this is nice because it's a little bit slower than what we saw with the Braves parade, which is great. That's Wallace, I believe. Yep. You I'm about, loving you to see the cars, Bear too. Alexander, by the way, that's yes. going to be one of the superstars of this team in the next few years. So. Bear Alexander is someone that just Bear went by. Why do you say Mike that? Mike Williams, Smile Munden. Yeah. This year's defense didn't have superstars. Next year's will. Tell me why you think that specifically Bear Alexander is going to be a superstar. Well, you, you look at Bear Alexander, you're like, okay, he's an average size dude. Well, he's 6'5", 330, and yeah. he moves side to side like nobody's business. Jalen Carter isn't the biggest dude on the field, but he's extremely powerful and he can move. That's the same mold Bear Alexander's in. If you're a true freshman and you play on the defense line for the University of Georgia, you're very special. Oh, yeah. So Bear Alexander was doing that this year. Michael Williams, by the end of the year, was probably the best yes. defense lineman we had on the team. So uh, the future is bright, to say the least, as far as how the dogs look on defense for the foreseeable future. It's crazy because when I was writing down some of the guys that are returning for this Georgia team, Michael Williams is one of the ones that I yes. starred and circled. Yes. Because he's one that had an incredible year, but also he will have an awesome season, I think, moving forward. So when you talk about little to no drop off you look at guys like what you just mentioned yeah I mean you, you expect the defense next year to be elite again this year felt like a rebuilding year for defense <laughs> but you had a lot of guys step up and just do their job all year long you feel like coming back into next year again this defense the the amount of talent that Kirby has now accumulated over here in Sanford Stadium on Saturdays is unfathomable yeah it's crazy to think it's, what he's doing th that's a nightmare to hear you say that from other teams uh, like you're like wait what this is a rebuilding year for the defense what are you talking about but it really is yeah I, I love post-game interviews and I was listening to the TCU stuff after it and one of their guys he's like man we we just hope to be on the tier that Georgia and Alabama are on soon yeah so the amount of teams that just have the talent to compete with Georgia right now. There's only three or four in the country. And uh, again, I've said like five times, yeah. what a great time to be a dog. I mean, as, oh. as, a, as a letterman, somebody who was here that was able to, you know, be a part of this so long. I'm glad I played when I did because I wouldn't sniff the field anymore. <laughs> I mean, the, the, these guys are big, fast, strong. We saw the recruits walk by here while we did. Yeah. They're enormous human beings. They truly even are. They're recruiting out of high school now. So uh, it's crazy. And what a time as a recruit. You're coming here and, and you're seeing all of this. Keely Ringo coming up on this pickup truck. Let's talk about Keely for a second because this was a guy who was on the edge of maybe declaring for the NFL draft or not. Uh, and he declared. He said, I'm going to go to the NFL draft. This is it. He is the guy that his first first ever interception in college football was a pick six in the national championship uh, game against last Alabama. year against Alabama yeah. nonetheless so Keely Ringo moving on good to see him doing great things as well has there ever been a man in the state of Georgia that made more <laughs> that made as many grown men cry as Keely Ringo did <laughs> probably I mean, not honestly it, hey, I'm not to to you. it got a little dusty up yeah. in, in the uh, Lucas Oil Stadium last year a little year. dusty you probably so, shed you know, a tear Keely too. Ringo though was an absolute stud all year yeah. long yeah. he started catching a little flack by the end of the he did. We yeah. played Ohio State, and they said, oh, they're picking on him. I saw some stats on that, and, you know, when they when they targeted Keely Ringo, they were about 50% passing for about 78 yards. Yeah. If they target anybody else, they were 17 for 18 for 300 yards. Like, <laughs> understand Keely Ringo is a stud. He's, he's yeah. the new breed of cornerback that you've got to have to compete. He's big, he's fast, and he's a thick, physical dude who's not afraid to tackle. And that's what Kirby brings in this program over and over. They're big, tall, long, and strong dudes, and Keely Ringo is going to be one of the guys we miss tremendously tremendously next year and here here's one of the things that I think people need to remember too you're not starting at corner for the University of Georgia for Kirby Smart if you're not good I'm no, sorry that's you're, just... you're going to be a top three a top three round draft pick in the NFL if you start here on the defense side of the ball in I, all likelihood I believe that we also saw Kendall Milton going by he is a running back from California got to play in Los Angeles Kendall Milton will be returning which is huge for the University of Georgia so will Brock Bowers the Brock? tight yep. end that is honestly just so sensational it's impossible he just drove by. It's impossible to really put into words how much Brock has meant to this offense. <laughs> so we'll know when Brock comes in because we're going to hear grown men <laughs> and 13-year-old girls go, ah! 
<laughs> It'll be my daughter oh. over there. So, She's like, the you know, Brock Bowers, uh, here, here's your here's your statement for the day. Yeah. Brock Bowers is the best player in college football mm. from a traditional standpoint. There's never been a tight end in our history and anywhere else in college football right now that does the things that he does for you from a blocking standpoint, running routes, going and getting the ball, breaking tackles. He's a generational talent that is unfair for him to get to come back one more year because he'd be a top 10 pick in the NFL as a tight end. I'm so, so glad we saw more of him in the national championship than we did. Yeah, you know, we didn't. I feel like we didn't see a lot of him at, a, at the Ohio State game. Yeah, hey, and th and that's a Todd Munkin deal for sure because you can scheme up to take guys away from it. And, and again, we moved the ball against Ohio State plenty, yeah. but in this last game, they decided it seemed like they made a concerted effort very quick yeah. to get the difference maker who is Brock Bowers the ball. Yes. And when he gets the ball, great things happen every single time. So. I'm glad that you said that he could be a top 10 draft pick. We saw Kyle Pitts, who was the highest drafted tight end in yeah. NFL history, go to the Atlanta Falcons. Brock, maybe we'll give him a run for his money. We'll see. Uh, they are going to lose another tight end in Darnell Washington. He is a treat. This dude is huge. And if you've never seen him in person, it's unbelievable. He's like 6'7". He is uh, just a freak of nature. It was good to see him get Get into the championship game after getting hurt a little bit. We have not yet seen Darnell on these floats, but I just wanted to mention that he is a tight end that George is going to be losing. But to get Brock Bowers back, that's uh, that's pretty incredible. Yeah, Darnell Washington brought a brought a dimension to the offense that this this the college football's probably never seen. Yeah, because he could line up. He's basically another tackle for you, who get in uh, big run sets and just pushing guys off the ball. Yeah. But at the same time, they split out. Now you got a five foot nine guy looking at him like. I, coach, hey, help, help, <laughs> double, double take all of something because he's just a nightmare, a nightmare for everybody plays against from a uh, from a matchup standpoint. So, yeah, big O, my favorite play in the national championship game from him. He caught a few balls, but one of the balls we threw, I think, actually to Brock, Darnell Washington yes. blocked a guy I know exactly all the way to about. Pasadena. Oh, yes. Literally. Yes. We were in Englewood. That's a long way away. So, uh we also have Stetson. Moves people. We also have Stetson's brother Luke on here as well. Uh, I talked to him earlier in the week in California, and he told me because I said, "Did you ever believe they're six years apart?" And I said, "Did you ever think you were going to play football with your brother?" And he said, "No." But when he told me he was coming back, it was really, really special for them to share the field together, to be uh, on the same team together. He's a wide receiver for Georgia. Obviously, did not play a whole ton, but to have Luke Bennett and Stetson Bennett share that moment, I'm sure, is really incredible. And now we're looking at Lad McConkey as well. Let's talk about Lad for a second, yes. actually. Lad, actually, first name, Andrew, Andrew Lad McConkey. Uh, Did not know that. He has been, uh, nobody knew that until this week, till he told us, actually. Shout out to our producer, our wonderful producer, Megan Smedley, for finding out that information. The guys were so shocked when we said, hey, his name's not really yeah. Lad, it's his middle name. But let's talk about Lad McConkey and the dimensions that he brings to this offense, because this is a dude that no one really thought could be as dangerous as he was. Yeah. Uh-oh, <laughs> champagne spray. Champagne <laughs> they're sprays. Break, they're breaking it out. You know, Lad McConkey is a guy, you look at Darnell Washington, like he's an enormous, he's a mountain of a man, a physical freak that we've never seen the likes of. Yeah. Lad McConkey looks like he's to be pledging for one of the fraternities down the road. <laughs> right, and yeah. And that's going to be the peak of his college career. It's true. I mean, maybe he's an intramural really good player. I saw somebody say his helmet doesn't even fit him right. It's but true. he gets on the field, his knack to go get the football, even in tough situations, he's tough, he's quick, he's smart, and he's the guy that sits and probably trusts him more than anybody else this year. He finds the ball, and the ball finds him. He is a playmaker in every sense of the word, and, and uh, I'm glad we got hit one more year, hopefully. Interesting that he wasn't a really highly recruited player no. either, but yet rose to the top of this team. He wanted to go to Tennessee, by the way. His family's Tennessee people, but they didn't want him. So they uh, toss it to him, and, uh, hey, he's a stinking baller. <laughs> he has been such a baller. You know who else is out there? A University of Georgia grad that has been doing such an excellent job with the coverage today. We have Savannah Levins. The dog walk is getting started. Savannah, what's going on out there? How crowded is it? Oh, man, it is packed. Hundreds of fans out here. We got people in trees. We got people on shoulders, and it looks like the dog walk just starting. There it is. The band is firing up. This right here is such a cool tradition, as you guys were saying. Usually starts two hours before the game. Just a way to get the players hyped up before they play. This right here is totally different, though. This is just a moment for these players, the staff, to take it in. All this love, all these fans, and let me tell you, that Georgia blood runs deep. What I think is so cool is just the history of this school. Right now, you can hear the band playing. That's the Redcoats. They go back to 1905. They actually played in a uh, on the world stage to announce that America was joining World War I. And that same band is here now playing, welcoming the Georgia Bulldogs into Sanford, moving back to where Maria and Chris are right now, surrounded by 
by so much love and so many fans. I've actually got a couple right here. You guys came from Atlanta. We came all the way from Atlanta. Friends, friends of 30 years. 30 years. 30 years. 30 years. Ready to be here. Dedicated, loyal, Georgia Bulldog fan. What do you love so much about Georgia? Georgia is a melting pot where everyone can come and feel Georgia comfortable in their home. We're number one, so again, they're coming down the dog walk right now. Thank you, ladies. You did great. And the other thing, too, is there's so many fans, young and old, and uh, traveling from... Oh, looks like we see Kirby coming down right now, uh, and you can hear the reactions of the crowd. I'm kind of behind the crowd right now, so I'm listening to my producers as to who they're seeing right now. But I know we got uh, Stetson up there leading the pack, Kirby Smart. Man, you got to believe that he is loving this right now. It probably doesn't get old, two in a row, sure, but this right here cannot get old. We got the marching band going uh, in full force right now. And speaking of traditions, I got here uh, probably around 8 a.m. and I heard that chapel bell ring. And if you know anything about UGA, you know that the sound of that bell signals victory, signals celebration. I used to ring it when I would uh, ace my exams and it has been going all day today. It's over on North Campus. And speaking of history again, that bell goes back Back to the 1800s, uh, I think it was 1890s, were when it was first rang for victory, and that sound, along with the band, along with the what you hear right now, "Go Dogs," this has been going for hours. G I A, oh man, gotta love that. Here they come down the dog walk right now. I can kind of, I'm on my tippy toes right now. This is a 5-4 bulldog right here, but you can see all the players, the staff, kind of up on those trucks waving to the crowds as they move on in. Can I ask you guys? Oh my goodness. So I, I was talking about um, generations of Bulldogs. You got this, yeah. sweetie. Is this your daughter? <laughs> yes, it is. How old is she? She is almost two. So why did you want to be here with her today, with your family? Because we grew up going here, and she'll grow up going here. So you're a Georgia Bulldog. Yep. What's your favorite Georgia tradition? I'm coming here and tailgating with my whole family. Did you ever do the dog walk when you were in school? Oh. Um, probably once or twice. Yeah, I was about to say. tailgate right down here, so we do every game. That's awesome. So what do you want your daughter to grow up with? A love of Georgia. Absolutely. <laughs> what do you think, girly? You say go dogs? <laughs> she, said, she said, it's cold and I'm tired, girlfriend. <laughs> All right, so they're moving through right now. This dog walk absolutely packed. I think you can probably see with our camera shot right now, all the people literally up in the trees, people decked out in all their Georgia gear. The cold's not holding them back. The band going in full force. And I think they're gonna make their way, yeah, right through here, the Tate Student Center. This is where a lot of students study. The bookstore is down here as well. Um, and they're making their way right now to Sanford where Maria and Chris are standing by. You guys, I wanna toss it down to you. I feel the vibes are great here. How about down there? We just heard the crowd roar because they're seeing the first signs now on this end of the dog walk as Coach Kirby Smart and his family are walking up close to us and just seeing that first glimpse. You're hearing everybody get so excited. I mean, it's unbelievable. What incredible shots of Kirby Smart and his family, oh him goodness, calling yes. the dogs. I mean, this is, as we've mentioned, such a special moment, not just for Kirby Smart, but for Athens. And we talk about they've done this before. They did this last year. But what does that mean? It doesn't really mean anything because he's enjoying every single moment because you really never know when your next championship's going to be, Russ. And you actually were inside the stadium last yeah. year for the celebration, but you haven't gotten to see the parade like this. As a former player, yeah. you were one of the guys that laid the foundation foundation for this to be possible what is this moment like well you're too kind for me but to be a part of the brotherhood that was there <laughs> is beyond special yeah you know that to me that's one of the coolest things about Kirby being our coach by the way is Kirby loves the University of Georgia as much as the random guy from Tifton who drove up here today yeah he loves as much as the folks who came it's all the way from Conyers or Wrightsville Georgia my hometown like he bleeds the red and black he's known his whole life so for him to be a part of this is beyond special for this university and this institution. Like, he loves it. He's not going anywhere. This is where he wants to be. It is his dream job of all dream jobs, and he's at the top of the stinking mountain and has us there. So uh, I just hope these players today 
<clears throat> can soak in how special this is. Like the chances that we do this again next year are not real high. Right. Yeah. It doesn't matter. It's just so hard to win. And for them to get to do it two years in a row, I, there's not words in our Georgia dialect to properly explain what these guys are getting to experience today. And, and I'm just so pumped for them. I mean, Kirby has been such a slam dunk, and that's nobody's arguing that, obviously. But to be a former player, be able to be the head coach and build what we believe is becoming a dynasty, a legacy at the University of Georgia is really incredible. And, you know, Chris was ta Russ was talking about just how hard it is in college football. You've got the transfer portal now. You've got the NIL now. This is stuff that guys like Russ never had to deal with. So Kirby is ever-changing with college football, which is so important, and that is exactly how you get to the top of the mountain. Not just get there, because getting to the top, people have done that. Nick Saban has done that. But sustaining the success, Chris, what he's building in Athens is so special. And just all those changes. I mean, recruiting now yes. with name, image, and likeness is so different yes. than it was just a couple of years ago. You and have two recruiting periods now. It's crazy. Yeah. yeah. And just to see that some players are going with whoever's, however they're going to get the most money versus where maybe their dream school is. So you brought up a really good point, and I, I want to ask your perspective on this as well, because Kirby talked about this. He said, honestly, thinking about some guys like Kenny McIntosh for example could make me cry he literally said that when we were in Los Angeles because he's talking about guys that are selfless right. for the program it's a hard thing to do in college football these days whether you like it or not but this is a bunch of dudes who love the University of Georgia who came back when they could go somewhere else and it's been so incredible to watch that it's unbelievable yeah. and the amount of buy-in that Kirby has created from the guys in this program is crazy I, I think Kirby is honest to a fault a lot of times and does it even with the recruiting you're seeing that if you follow the national media stuff there are guys trying to get out of letters of intent they signed two or three uh, like a month or so ago because nil stuff's not coming out yeah kirby seems to be really honest with these guys just tell them like, look <clears throat> here's where you're at we're going to take care of you you're going to be in a good position financially you're going to be really comfortable at georgia but if you do the things we do we're putting you in position to have generational money for you your family and your kids kids to come yeah if you if you go through our program and come out the other side and make it to the nfl so i think he sells a vision that the product on the field and what's happening in the draft backs up and guys can look at it and believe what he says and they're like all right i'm gonna be a part of that for a guy like kenny mcintosh kenny's been a good player for georgia right he's been a guy that's going to go down as a dgd we love him but this year he transitioned into a superstar that's going to be remembered as long as university of georgia has a football team again as one of the cogs of this back-to-back -back national championship team and now he's about to go make a lot of money in the nfl <laughs> yeah know. so what kirby's telling these guys is he's being brutally honest with them and the guys that buy in um, see success that they can't even imagine. And one of the guys that is seeing some success that he can't even imagine would be Stetson Bennett. There he is. Wow. With, it looks like Jamon Dumas Johnson. I can't really make <laughs> out his picture, but it is Jamon Dumas Johnson, his boy. Jamon Dumas Johnson, one of the standouts on the dogs defense that will be returning next year. But Stetson Bennett just running through the crowd. He, Whether you have believed that he is a legend or will be a legend or not, this dude, we were talking about it when you guys couldn't hear us. Russ and I were. Look at the stats for Stetson. He has built something incredible for himself. A former walk-on. This guy was on the scout team at the Rose Bowl the last time that Georgia was in California before they were there for the national championship. He was helping out the defense on scout team. And now look at him. He's got two rings to prove it. He's going to go down as perhaps the best quarterback in Georgia history. His stats say so. His rings say so. Uh, good for Stetson. I mean, what a terrific day. I hope he soaks in every moment. Whatever's next for Stet today is going to be a great day for him and just to see him celebrate this I mean I don't know that we can even fathom the pressure that he was under as being the underdog and hearing all the chatter around him about he's not our guy some fans didn't want him some fans did and he overcame all of that and just this is of course the national championship is the culmination of that sure. but just seeing him be able to connect with the fans and see that support that he has now probably one of the things that helped him out is because he had a flip phone last year he was <laughs> talking about the flip phone just i don't even know how you even get cell service with those things anymore he said it was great because he really had barely worked at the time he, he, he may be smarter than the rest of us i mean honestly um, he probably is but he did but ditch the flip Flip phone. He did confirm that Stetson he's got an has iPhone played now. In how many college football playoff games? How yeah. many? Do you know? uh, let's see. Four. How many most valuable players does Stetson have from those four games? Four. 
He was the most oh, outstanding yeah, offensive, right. player offensive MVP in, in every all single four one. That's games right. He played in the playoffs. It, it's it, that's not even fathomable for the amount of talent that Georgia has. That's true. For the same guy to be the offensive MVP of all four playoff games. It's yeah. crazy. Uh, it's one of the things that we're not talking about enough, right? Because in every single playoff appearance that you've had, you're an offensive MVP. That's so hard to do, you guys. And the woo-hoo. fact that he was able to do that, we got to go, dogs, and a bark in our in our microphone. Not it's getting like, a little crazy out here. It, it made me jump a little bit too. We got Brock Bauer is coming out right now, taking some pictures with the fans. Lad McConkey as well. These are some guys soaking in the moment as they should. Back-to-back national championships for the Georgia Bulldogs. What an unbelievable feat. And Brock Bowers got to do it in his home state. He said that was really cool. He told me that on the field. That was one of the things that he was really excited about. Not that Los Angeles is his hometown. He's more from the Napa Valley area, so a little bit more north in Northern California, but it was nice to have his family around. Reggie Chapman did an awesome job getting his mom and talking to his family and what it meant for Brock Bowers. As we said earlier in the broadcast, this is a tight end of tight ends. He is the tight end of tight ends. He's one of the ones that has stood out in this country for college football. Lad McConkey, one of the guys who has been an underdog as well. A lot of people didn't believe that he would be very good at college football. And look at him now. He's out there with the best of them, right? I hope you get a chance to see Lad McConkey standing beside Broderick Jones and Ameris Mims. <laughs> I hope it happens. <laughs> yeah. it, I mean, unless you haven't seen Broderick today. I think it was Broderick with the, the white. Yeah, the, the face yes, cover on. The face cover on. Thing. It's You'll, cold, by the way. Chris did not bring yes, warm weather today. I know. I know. Hey, I, we're trying. The sun's <laughs> it's starting. It's working really hard trying yeah, to warm us up. We are seeing some sunshine out here, too. Oh, plenty of sun. And, you know, and that just makes the celebration even more exciting. Imagine if we were out here on a rainy, cold day. That would not be fun. But it's almost, you know, it is cold. But, you know, you always in the fall when we have these football Saturdays when you, you know, some of those games are 90 yeah. degrees and you're sweating to death and you long for those. Those, uh, those games that are a little bit cooler. And we've got this nice, cool celebration going on today. Hey, this, this is beautiful. football weather. This yeah. is Anybody that wants to complain about being out here today, watching all these guys come through, the faithful, coming out through the Tate Plaza, riding in the parade. Oh. You know, I've seen guys catching balls in the parade, throwing them back to people, high-fiving everybody. we got people barking our ear like yeah. the atmosphere. It's getting hard to hear where we're at because the, the guys are starting to come through not far behind us. You just I mean, saw it's, it's unbelievable what the Bulldog Nation is getting to experience. It's so awesome. And as it gets closer to us, you can probably hear our energy pick up a little bit because we're vibing off of the crowd. We had uh, – you just saw Broderick Jones a little while ago. He was on top of a float with that face covering that we were talking about. We saw Stetson's brother, Luke Bennett, as well. Also, uh, he's not on the screen right now, but Lad McConkey was wearing a college football playoff jacket. Super cool. One of those guys that we were talking gotta about. Wear being that. An under- of course, right? One of those guys that we were talking about being an underdog. Then you got a couple of guys just cool, calm, and collected, checking the cell phone, you know, getting some videos maybe. But you have seen these players, which to me is the coolest part today, guys. You have seen these players interacting with the fans, going up to them, taking videos, taking selfies, high-fiving them. Because look at the crowd. Look at the scene in Athens, Georgia right now this is about as crazy as it gets here i mean this does look like a dog walk you guys but honestly to the nth degree it, it is so massive these crowds and it's really cool to see these guys and, coming and, down and life for these guys they don't know it yet they're all young it moves so fast you go from yeah. a 22 23 stetson's case 25 year old guy yeah. you know yeah. being here playing thinking you're on top of the world being able to celebrate with all that next thing you know you're 40 you got four kids and live down the road so for these guys you talking about you yeah maybe <laughs> sounds familiar right so um I, I again i've said it once already i just hope these guys can take a breath today and just you know do a panoramic view of what's going on around yes. and realize how special this is we take it for granted too often now as georgia fans because we won two in a row we're 29 and one over the last two years whatever it is all these accolades everything like that sure. this is really hard yeah this is not something that happens on a regular basis so uh these guys man like they're gonna remember this forever the rings are great all that but a bit of walk through these fans, yeah. this place, with their brothers who they've been in the locker room with for all these years, is going to be something that they never get to experience again. So Ever it's, again. It's awesome. It's really crazy. Let me let me be honest with you guys for a second because I've covered now six national championships, and I always tell myself I'm so lucky, and every time I stand on the field before I cover one, I take a deep breath and I take it in because I always tell myself I don't know when I'm going to get to be able to be here again. And, and like you said, I hope that these players stand there and, and really just acknowledge the day for what it is. It's it's an incredible celebration, but like you said, this is 
really just such an awesome accomplishment. And I'm proud of Athens, not that I thought anything else would happen, but for showing up in droves uh -oh. today. I even said maybe people won't be as excited because they won last year. I was wrong. Look at everybody. And, this and, is crazy. And Jennifer Bellamy said that at the at the beginning of oh, the yeah. um, parade. She said she thought that really the crowd up there looked even more crowded. And I'm like you. I was afraid that maybe people would be like, yeah, we did that last year. But to see this turnout today yeah. is great. And as you were saying that these guys, the ones who are coming back next year, I hope that they'll use that, use this as motivation to realize this doesn't happen every year, but maybe we can make it happen every year. Uh, Keep talking. Yeah, you're, you're exactly right. I mean, I would love to make this an annual tradition. I'm an old curmudgeon. I don't want to always come to these things. I'd rather sit at my recliner at the house, have a nice steak, be comfortable and all that. But when you get down here in this, again, like – I've got four young kids. My daughter's 13, all the way down to a three-year-old son. So for them to be able to come down here and see this is something they're going to remember forever. All these fans, the majority of folks never get a chance to, to strap on the helmet and the shoulder pads and be a part of it. So to be this close to greatness, to be this close to a legacy that Kirby and those guys are building is something that is unstinking believable. So take us through that for a second because you said a lot of people can't strap up and play, which is true. And a lot of the people that are here in Athens celebrating these dogs today we're not able to experience what you have but it's very rare for guys to experience this moment too as yeah. players just give me that perspective a little bit look i was a part of some great teams like you said we won the sec twice yes played for it three times but we never quite got over the mountain again if we were in the playoff era they're in now i think we would have <laughs> <side> <laughs> okay, okay. but um but it, it's it, a very the percentage of, of kids that play college football is it's like 0.01%. I don't even know what the numbers. I'm making stats up. But the, the percentage of those guys who then make it to play for the national championship, much less win it, is you're, you're part of such an, ex an exclusive brotherhood now of people that have a ring that say national champions that <laughs> we can't even understand what it means at this point. I think we'll look back on this five, ten years from now and say, golly, what Kirby, Ladd, Stetson, Nolan Smith, Chris Smith, Cedric Van Pran, what those guys did for our university put us on a level that we didn't even think was <laughs> we didn't even think was attainable, you know, ten years ago. I mean it's kind of crazy because the talk in college football really has been Nick Saban and Alabama, considering all of the championships that he's won. He won one with LSU as well. But now it's starting to be Kirby Smart. I mean oh, he's is. the guy that you're gonna start it's funny because your boy David yeah. Pollock in yeah. front of Coach Saban on yeah. ESPN said that Kirby and Georgia is the team to beat now in college football. Do you believe that? Uh, well, I mean, we've won two in a row, so I don't think you can even argue that if you want to. And, it, you know, in that moment, we, I we, were, we were giving Pollock a hard time this week about it, and he wasn't trying to disrespect Saban. Yeah. He was just stating facts. I mean, Saban just happened to be sitting Saban there. Saban just happened to be sitting there. Saban handled it well. You know, <laughs> Nick Saban's going to go down right now. If college football ends tomorrow, okay. Nick Saban is the greatest coach of all time. Yeah. Without question, you can't argue. I don't care if you think I'm wrong and you're right. I'm right and you're wrong. The next man who's got a shot at beating Saban in that – with that title, though, is Kirby Smart. I mean, he's got a chance to be in that echelon of coaches that is beyond great but goes into all-timers. So that's that's the that's the chance Kirby has, and that's the mindset he has. So, uh, you know, I expect him to go there. And it's really crazy because that is literally his former boss. He obviously was a part of national championships with Nick Saban at the University of Alabama, but yep. Kirby has made his own way. He's created his own path. Of course, you take things from people that you work for and, and you instill that into your coaching style, but Kirby's done his own thing and he's doing it well. And the best part is he's really adapting. And, and what Saban was so good at for so long, Kirby is now excelling at, yeah. is that he's adapting with the change of college football. And this is the result. It is so hard I can't I can't stress that enough and what we've been talking about all afternoon how hard it is to win in college football to do it twice I I can't express it enough how difficult it is Kirby doesn't get enough credit for being so far ahead of the curve when it comes to this transfer portal NIL recruiting etc roster management is now the name of the game in college football trying to keep track of who's coming into your program who's leaving your program while making sure that you hit the number of scholarships that the NCAA allows which is 85 Kirby has done that right now in, in a way that nobody else can match and and it didn't just happen by chance last year he saw this coming years ago and started building his roster starting started requiring his guys to recruit in such a way to where 
they are so far ahead of the curve from everybody else right now. People are now trying to emulate what the University of Georgia does on every single level of a program. I mean, it is literally incredible what they're building here. And look at the dog walk, Chris. This oh. is a beautiful sight. You're somebody who went to the University of Georgia. <laughs> you're a big dogs fan. And just give me really quickly your perspective on everything you're looking this at. This is just amazing. I love to see how Athens and Dog Nation has turned out to support this team and celebrate. It is going to be so exciting just to see uh, them honored today yeah. inside Sanford Stadium. We're seeing the crowds behind us that are kind of moving more towards Sanford Stadium right now. They're going to be filling it up. And uh, to, to find out that the general admission tickets, you know, they offered these tickets first to season ticket holders and supporters, and then whatever was left went for general admission, and those got snapped up really quickly. And that's just the support of this team and the support of Dog Nation, and it's so great to see this today. And you can see how people behind us are kind of filing in from the Dog Walk, which was right over there in Tate Plaza between the Tate Center and the bookstore. Now everybody's kind of making their way over to the stadium. The bridge is full. People are trying to get any it's kind packed, of glimpse guys. that they can of these players. It's so packed. And you know where else it's packed is along the Dog Walk. We have Savannah Levins. You've been hanging out there with a lot of different fans out there. Savannah, what have you learned and how excited these Dogs fans are on the Dog Walk? Oh my God, people are so excited. Starting to make moves now, but the dog walk is still going. I've talked to fans of all ages all day. We had some little babies here. We had grandmas and grandpas. We had some high school students traveling and now some actual Georgia Bulldogs. How's it going, guys? Good, how are you? Good, good. So tell me why you wanted to be out here for this parade today. Um, So we were here last year and then they back to back. So we had to come back and do it all over again. What's it like? for you to be a Georgia Bulldog like in the center on the national stage. Oh, it's absolutely unreal. The fans are amazing. Everybody's excited. It's amazing. What about for you guys? What's been the best part of the day? Honestly, just seeing everybody here. I've been here for three years. Two out of the three years, we won a national championship. I mean, I can't ask for much better than this. Are you guys lifetime Georgia Bulldog fans? Oh, or? Yeah. Okay, yeah, tell absolutely. me about that. I mean, growing up a Bulldog fan, my dad, like, diehard fan, he currently lives in California right now, and he's like, which is he could be here? And I was like, I'll be here for you, so I had to do it. I'm a Georgia Bulldog as well, and I remember those memories of, like, watching football with your parents. Do you have those as well, and did that really put an imprint on you? Oh, yeah. We used to, like, have neighborhood watch parties for the Bulldogs, so being here is just a dream come true. What about for you guys? I'm definitely a first-generation Bulldog fan, so it's awesome to, like, you know, be the first in my family to like, you know, like sports, you know, it's awesome. Did you recruit your family to be Bulldogs though? They are Bulldog fans because of me. So they, they actually care and they, you know, they're like, what are you doing today? Like what's going on on campus? It's awesome. Yeah, my dad was a Florida fan uh, until I got a scholarship to UGA. And then he was <laughs> like, you're saving me money? All right, I'll root for the dogs. So, so you guys are here out here today. What's the plan on campus? I mean, have you heard from fellow students and stuff like that, what you guys are gonna do later? Oh, I think everyone's going out tonight. I think it's gonna be packed. It was packed on Monday. I'd never seen anything like it. Even last year, it was way worse this year. It was insane. I was hearing the chapel bell ringing earlier, and I was talking earlier for people watching at home who might not know what that tradition is. Tell me a little bit about that, and have you rung the bell before? Yeah, you know, whenever we celebrate wins, you know, national championship, even completing finals, we all go to the chapel bell, ring it. We don't have the fountain right now because they, you know, emptied it out, but we used to jump in the fountain as well. It's awesome. I love the traditions we have here. It's also been cool, like, because we were in COVID and lockdown for so long. This is the first time I've seen so many people come together and yeah. really just have the sense of community. Community. Has it been that way for you? Yeah, I mean, whenever we were here on Monday, it was insane because everyone was just so happy and rooting for the dogs, and it was amazing. Well, thank you guys so much. Have fun tonight. Stay thank safe. You. I appreciate you guys. Yeah, the dog walk kind of wrapping up here. You can see kind of the crowds moving onto the walkway, moving down to where uh, Chris and Maria are. So we are going to toss back to them right now. Maria, how's it looking? Are people making their way to you? Well, Savannah, people have certainly made their way to us. It is absolutely <laughs> packed, you guys. I mean, this has changed from when we first started sitting here a couple hours ago. You can see everybody behind us. What is the feeling right now, Russ? Uh, well, we've had three Bulldogs come by. We've had yes. people barking in our ears. <laughs> I feel like I need security behind me because the amount of people who are now just starting to swell around us it's is overwhelming. So, I mean, uh, you can kind of see it on, on the TV, but not as much as you can feel it, really. Yeah, uh, we, we feel everybody coming in here now. Now. It's just that energy that's moving in. Even from, so the dog walk came this way. Yeah. People are going over to the stadium. But then also a lot of people coming from North Campus yes. here. They who are. Just, who just maybe didn't even go to the parade. Yeah. They're just coming in.
began parking downtown and walking through campus, making their way to the stadium now for the ceremony. In droves. I mean, yeah. I, you guys can't see behind the camera. There are people coming in droves, and they're all going to make their way inside Sanford Stadium where this national championship team, two-time national championship team, will be honored. So the players will get a, a nice ceremony. I'm sure Kirby Smart will speak a little bit. This has just been such a great day so far. We've had beautiful weather. Yes. We can thank Chris for that, even though it is a tad cold. A little we, cold, but that's okay. We would have liked that fix, but it's been such a beautiful day. And, and you're getting to see this side of the parade that yeah. you didn't see last year. What's yeah. your perspective on what this is actually like? Uh, I, you know, I'm sitting here. I, I'm just so excited for my kids. Yeah. yeah. Like, my kids are getting to experience this as dog fans. And, and it's crazy because, like, my daughter's 13. She's the oldest. My son, Rhett, who's going to be peeking here behind Say hey, Rhett's here. <laughs> They, uh, this is Rhett. This, this is, is Rhett's son, Rhett, who's 11. <laughs> like, they don't remember the days when Georgia wasn't near the top of the mountain. You know, for yeah. the last five or six years, Georgia's been elite in everything. But now they get to be a part of, you know, back-to-back -back national championships. My daughter said this year, she was on the radio with us, and we were talking about Florida. They said, are you, are you concerned about Florida? She's like, no, we never lose to Florida. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> you need to go listen to Larry Munson some more. You need to be more nervous about this. <laughs> That's funny. So for them to be able to be down here today to experience this in a place that's so special to my wife and I, on campus here at University of Georgia in Sanford Stadium, that's a memory that I get to have with them that, uh, that that's going to be cherished as long as I am you know, have two feet on this earth. So. I love that, and I hope that the players can take that perspective as well, and Kirby Smart as well, and Chris Holcomb. Soak it in, my friend. This is so cool for you. You I went to school here. I am just loving this. At the beginning of the broadcast, uh, you know, we said it's really neat to be sitting here on this street where I used to walk down across that bridge to go to classes right over there at the journalism so school. Cool. And here we are right now sitting in this spot where I walked by every day and celebrating this team and really celebrating this university. Yeah. I mean, back-to-back -back national championships, of course, that's great for football. That's great for recruiting. But that is a big, huge difference in just the helping the image of this university and the attention that comes to this university, too. You know, we heard last year that just after winning the national championship last year, how the number of applications went up oh, yeah. I'm sure. for this year's class just because so many students heard more about the University of Georgia, saw so much about it, and thought, hey, I want to be a part of that. Not necessarily just because of football, yep. but it got their attention, and it's hard to get in here now. I'm glad that I went in 1982, <laughs> in the fall of 1982. <laughs> I joke about if I applied now with my SAT score from back then, the folks in the admissions office would have said, oh, bless his heart. <laughs> I would have never gotten in here. I don't know. I feel like you could have. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. No, it's it's such a cool moment for, for all of Athens, really. I mean, there are people from all over the state, all over the country, probably, that came in here to Athens to witness this. And it's history. Back-to-back -back national championships. It's never been done in the college football playoff era. It's so incredibly special, you guys. And it's going to be so special to celebrate these players inside the stadium. I, I want to hear from you, Russ, again. You know, we're talking about the players' perspective and how today you want them to make sure that they soak in the moment. But truly, as I look around, I'm speechless. But can you even imagine what the players are thinking and feeling right no, now? I, I can't. You know, you uh, there, there used to be a sign in the locker room we would come out, and it was it, we, it, we would all hit it when we went out. And it said, um, be, where, be worthy as you tread upon this hallowed side, for you dare to tread where champions have tried. And now those guys get to be a part of the championship pedigree that guys after them for years and years and years get to understand what it means to be a part of the University of Georgia. And, uh, you know, their names are in the rafters. Jerseys aren't being retired anymore. That doesn't happen. Yeah. But these guys right now are legends for as long as they live. And they got to be a part of back-to-back -back national champions, which is stuff that even guys like me could only dream of. Yeah. So um, it, it's such an exclusive brotherhood, such an exclusive club. And now they've moved on to the next level to where, um, you know, they, they get to be champions back-to-back -back for the rest of their lives as Bulldogs. You know, one thing we haven't yet talked about today, and I don't know how it slipped everyone's mind, 65-7. to seven. Yeah. Oh, wow. 65 yes. to 7, folks. That is unbelievable. I mean, that is literally the largest margin of victory ever in a title game. Uh, it's the most points scored ever in a title game. Georgia, from the time that the coin flipped, dominated TCU from top to finish. Look, when the dogs lined up against those amphibious frogs from Texas, <laughs> we, we thought, all right, this is a cool story. They're fun. And you, you go down and we score some points. And all of a sudden, they throw the ball deep down the field and score. Mark's like, what's happening? Are they scoring? I was like, eh, that was a busted coverage. Let's see what happens. And we get sure. the ball right back and just boom, boom, boom. Yeah. And TCU had no answer for anything we did the entire game. And it was – I'm from Riceville, Georgia. 
in Wrightsville, Georgia, I'm going to just tell you, that was a butt whooping in every sense of the word. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's, there's no other way to explain it. You know, Georgia fans have wanted for years, like, Kirby, don't take your fault against. Let's see what we're let's see what we're capable of. That's not Kirby style. We get up 38-7. He chokes the game. He runs the ball. He's conservative on defense. He protects the quarterback. But not this game. No, not that not game this at game. all. He just kept reloading. Boom, boom, boom. Carson Beck comes in. Branson Robinson comes in. Boom, boom, boom. It was an absolute demolition of a great football team, which was TCU. So you know, I'm going to put you on the spot. Are you the most famous uh, bulldog from Wrightsville, Georgia? Uh, I, I, I think I maybe, maybe I make top three, but uh, not the best. You do have a retired jersey, though, at your high school. Yeah. So there you go. That, may, that means <laughs> me, that you're famous. Me and Herschel. Yeah. That, that yeah. Means we basically that you're have famous. the same impact, right? <laughs> there you go.